today I want to back up now in Romans 8, and I want to start with Romans 8, 1 through 4, but I'm going to focus on Romans 8, 1, because it is very, very powerful. So let's begin. The title of this message is No Condemnation. Say it with me. No Condemnation. All right? Let's take off with reading of this. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do. By sending his own son in the likeness of, of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteousness requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Amen? Amen. Romans 8, 1 through 4. Now, what is the essence of Christianity? And uh, I want to just summarize it real quick. Uh, you may want to jot a few notes, but I'm just going to be very quick with this essence of Christianity. It is this whole idea that God is the supreme value, the supreme creator, the supreme God of the entire universe. As far as you can see, as far as the devils can see, as far as Hubble can see, God is the creator and the supreme value of that, that universe. Someone say amen. Amen. And that we do not honor him as supremely valuable. Now, we do not. If you convince yourself that, oh, yes, I honor God all day, your life will reflect that you do not. Why? Why is that? We do not honor him as that supreme, that he is so supreme to us that we always, 100% of the time, honor him. It's because we are guilty of sin. So, let me be real clear. We are guilty of sin and under his, his uh, potential wrath that he has defined in the word of God. So being guilty of sin places us under the, the coming wrath of God. And he alone, God alone, can rescue us from his own condemnation. Is this too complex so far? Are we with you? Everybody with me? Are we there? Now, guess what? He has done the very thing that needs to be done for us through the death and the resurrection of his son, whom? Jesus Christ, for everyone who is in him. So if I summarized, I'd say, holy God, sinful man. If I summarized, I would say, coming wrath, perfect Savior. If I would summarize, I would say, Jesus Christ crucified and risen, justified by faith, sanctified by faith, and now Paul comes to the ending part here in, in this amazing uh, chapter 7. He comes and he begins chapter 8 of Romans and he says, therefore, in view of all that has happened, everything that's there, listen, he says, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Whoa! If that doesn't snap your head back, nothing will. So this is the essence of Christianity. And um, that is the central foundational message of God to the world. There is, that is the gospel. That's what we're to communicate. That's what we're to share. That's what, listen, if you want to come up out of the wrath of God that is coming, you must receive Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And my friend, it is your job and it is my job to announce that truth to the world. Amen. No condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. Okay. So in, in that whole summary there, I'm trying to get, it, get to the essence of what we're about as a Christian, and now I can get into the heart of now no condemnation. And uh, so let's begin with this question, what is the gift? And what I mean here, I want you to notice the word, a very small word, it's called 
now. <laughs> I don't know that you've ever thought about it, and it's, it's how do you define now? It's important in the English language, how do we define now? Because it can have two different types of meanings. One of the meanings of now would be now, meaning finally everything is in place. Everything has been done finally. So now I can start eating my tacos or I can start eating my fajitas or I can finally the supper is ready and now we can eat, right? Has anybody ever been there? It's like go at Christmas morning. Or, no, it's like this. Christmas, what happens? All during the month of, of December as the tree is put up and everything, all of a sudden presents start appearing under the tree at my house. They just show up. I don't know where they came from. They just show up. And, uh, and then here's what happens. Hey, 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 Mom, can I go ahead and open my present? Not now. <laughs> not now. Why? Because everything's not ready yet. There is a time to open the presents. There's a place to open the presents. Because she'll say, no, you cannot open it now. Right? But then here comes Christmas morning, and what happens? They say, can we open them now? This is when they were small. <laughs> uh, can we open them now? And we said, yes, you can open them now. Usually it's right after the prayer, and we put baby Jesus in the manger. And then we open the presents. Now you can open it. In other words, finally, everything is in place. Finally now. Now, that's one way to define now. But there's a second way that we can define now. And it is now, it comes before you thought it would. There's a surprising now, right? It says, whoa, whoa right, it's right now. Have you ever been kind of tootling along and all of a sudden you go, whoa, it's now. I got to be somewhere. I got to do something. In other words, now in that context, okay? So someday you're going to, for an example, let me, let me just give you an idea. I have, um, you, you know I have one or two sons, and uh, right now there are four of them at home with a daughter-in-law, and, and um, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing, and it's an ugly thing. I mean, you know, it's both, right? I mean, anybody can identify? Say Amen. <laughs> it's a wonderful thing, and it has its uh, challenges, right? There's a little roughness around the edges sometimes. And, uh, you know, praise God I'm already shaped in what God wants me to be because I can see all their problems, you know. <laughs> I can see all them, <laughs> you know. So, uh, but, but it's, you know, I look at them sometimes and I say, you know what? Someday I know you're going to earn a lot of money. You're going to be where you want to be, and you're going to be doing the thing you want to do, and you're going to be able to live on your own. I have to turn my face when I'm saying that. I'm going, oh, I hope, I pray. But here's what I say. But I know now you need money to pay your truck note. So now... In advance, I give you some money because I love you. So here's a here's a, here's five hundred dollars. So you're you're all now is now, and they go, oh, pop, thanks a lot. And then they go spend it on something else. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! You just go, what? But see, we can see that there's two ways to think about now, isn't there? There's the finally now, and then there's a sudden now. It's just, oh my gosh, I didn't realize that was happening. And boom, look at here. And you just go, ooh, I love that surprise now when the money comes and I didn't think about it. I love that now. But I also love the now that everything's in place. Now I can open up the present. Are you, is anybody with me yet? Yes. You know what I'm talking about? Okay, well, guess what? In Romans 8, when we start talking about there's no now there is no condemnation, guess what? We can see both of those right there. There's, a, there's the now, there's no condemnation. It's finally now, and it's already now. Now, let me give you a verse that kind of supports that idea. It's the finally now and already now. Everything had to be in place, finally now, but 
already now. Whoops, you mean right now? Yeah, right now. It's all in place. Listen to this. So, uh, if we went to the, uh, oh, I forgot, uh, Romans 8, 3. I wanted to share that with you. I guess I don't have it on the slide. But listen to what it says. For God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin. Now, he condemned, past tense, sin in the flesh. So, the finally now, or the already now, is even supported throughout Romans 8. Everywhere you look, there's just some, one of those two are taking place. So, here, here is the finally now. This is what I want to talk to first. For years, the law commanded uh, by the law uh, condemned lawbreakers and said that they were sinners and and that the point of uh, the law was to drive us to the idea of righteousness, to begin to have right living within our, in our minds and in our hearts. And that the sacrifice, though, the sacrifice once and for all would come. It was prophesied in the early prophets, right? It would come. And it's, it's not now, but it is coming, right? So the Old Testament, we, we see as we move through the law, it was to point the fact out that we were sinners and we needed, uh, we needed saving, and they had, God had ordained a way that that sin uh, would be uh, dealt with. And uh, so when it comes time when sinners could experience no condemnation is when the ungodly could be justified by faith. So when we could come to a point by faith. Now, now even in the Old Testament, faith was active. Anybody remember when uh, Abraham's faith was reckoned as righteousness? You remember that? See, it's by faith that God restores us into this idea or brings us into this idea that finally now we have something to work with. And um, so how did he do that for us? How did he do finally now for you and I? Here's how. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, in human form to die on the cross. And he was our representative, our substitute for our sin. And so right there on the cross, hanging on a cross, suffering, Jesus Christ had all the condemnation for sin laid upon him. Our sin, your sin, my sin, all laid upon Jesus. This is what the gospel teaches. This is what we talk about. How the payment for sin was done on the cross, stamped, paid in full. Listen to what it says. For while we were still weak, or another version says, while we were still sinners, at the right time, see that's now, Christ died for the ungodly. See, finally now Christ died for the ungodly. That's the now that we're talking about. You with me? So, finally now. So, God had a plan working, and finally now everything was right. Christ came, died. Guess what? Bam! My sin is now can be forgiven. I can come out from underneath the wrath of God. I can escape it, if you will. Through Jesus Christ. Amen. So then there's also the already now. Now this is looking toward the future. The, this, this is what I would consider the final judgment. See, when we die and we go before the Lord or he returns or however this final judgment takes place right here, we're talking about is yet to come. It's yet to come. So today the devil will try to deceive. The devil will try to blind the devil will try to accuse you. <laughs> he will try to swallow you up in guilt. Get this, people. You will, when you're feeling guilty, you're not feeling the Spirit. Can anybody say, oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Listen, guilt is not something from God. Amen. Conviction is, guilt is not. It's always from the, the pit of hell. And it's to drag you down into defeat. Guilt is to hurt you, not help you. Conviction is to steer you so that you walk in him. 
That's the difference. If you're feeling guilty, throw it out, cast it out, let it wrap up, say, no. <laughs> Romans uh, 8, 33 and 34 address it. Now, here's how it's addressed. Now, get this. I love this part. It says, already now, listen, who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies, not, not you. It is God who justifies, who is, uh, oh, who is to condemn. Here it is, the word condemn. That's what we're talking about, right? No condemnation. Here it is right there. It says, who is to condemn Christ Jesus is the one who died more than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of the Father, who indeed is interceding for, whew, come on, me and you. <laughs> I am not left alone. Listen, he says, I'll always be with you, praise God. But there's more than that. He's always interceding for me. <laughs> Woo! Because <laughs> I need it. I don't know about you. I need intercession on a regular basis, day in, day out. I, I need it. Amen. I need it. And the truth is we we have both the backward looking to remind us Christ has come, become our condemnation. In other words, he became condemnation for us so that we would be saved. There's no condemnation for us now. And we have the forward looking idea that, that we look forward uh, in this to remind us that even though judgment is coming, come on, Say it with me. There is no condemnation. Even though judgment is coming, if you're in Christ Jesus our Lord, you shall escape any judgment whatsoever. You say, well, what about the judgment seat of Christ? <laughs> He's not judging you. He's judging your works. Only. There's no condemnation for us that are in Christ Jesus. In fact, I'm not guilty. So everybody say, I'm not guilty. <laughs> say, let's say it again. I'm not guilty. Listen, the, what flows from that statement is no condemnation. Say it. No condemnation right now. Amen. Not, not just in the future. Listen. Not now. Not in the, listen, from the day I said I accept Christ as my Lord and Savior as he wooed me to him, listen, from that day on, all the guilt, all the condemnation, all of the feeling horrible about myself and I have really messed up and I've done this and I've done that, and you go, all of that condemnation is from the devil. It's not from God. I am not guilty. I'm justified. That's what justification is about. Man, it should bring us to tears because guess what? I know how bad I am. I know, how, I know what I've done. So we got to ask this question, who enjoys this? Because it's very important that we ask this. Because the truth is, not everyone can. Not everyone. It says, there is now no condemnation over my life. But only those who are in Christ Jesus our Lord. Some are in him and some are not. Is that as clear as I can be? If you're in Christ Jesus our Lord, you're experiencing what I'm talking about. If you're not, you're, you're right under the umbrella of the wrath of God and you will be condemned and you will go to hell and you will live there for the rest of your spirit days forever and ever and ever. That's what the Bible teaches. That is truth. See, and secondly... It's only by being in Christ does his condemnation becomes, become uh, your salvation. <laughs> if you want to be able to say now at the last judgment, can you imagine standing before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and all these other nations and peoples are around and, you know, 
you're you're bowing before him because you know you recognize who he is and all of a sudden you in your heart all of a sudden it starts saying now 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 I'm going to fully realize that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, Amen. our Lord. Because he's going to say, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into my glory. Whew. It's time for high knees right there, buddy. I'm getting across the finish line. I'm coming in as fast as I can. Not that God's going to change his mind, but I don't want any, you know, I'm getting in. Better than one day in the house of the Lord and a thousand elsewhere, you know what I mean? Amen. I'm going to get in there. And the wrath of God, the condemnation of God is taken away in Christ, not outside of Christ. Only in Christ. I have to be in Christ for that to exist. Now, what does that mean to us today? Now, let me just give you a couple of examples of what it means today. Let's just do this. No condemnation in physical pain. Say it with me. No condemnation in physical pain. You say, what in the world are you talking about, Pastor? See, when you suffer physical pain and it lasts a long time, it seems to get worse instead of better. And even seems that at some point that it may end in death and not healing. I mean, that's a big, big piece of a life pie to have to eat, isn't it? When you're suffering, when you're in pain, when it's difficult, whether it's physical or psychological, all of that kind of stuff rolled together, no matter what it might, the accuser comes to you. What does he say? What does he say? Your own thoughts, the devil himself, the, the friends uh, may be around you, and says, it's your punishment. Because you've been so bad. You deserve it. Because you didn't do this, you didn't do that. Oh, you did that. That's why this is happening to you. Let me tell you, as straight as I know how to tell you, those words are not from God. They're from the pit of hell. They're trying to destroy you. They're trying to knock you off the path of Christ. Listen, there is no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus our Lord. Because he will even go so far as to ask the reason you're suffering so much. Now, I'm not suggesting there's not consequences to our decisions. There are. Okay? There are consequences. But condemnation? No. Guilt? No. Okay, how do I survive that kind of assault? That's what I'm giving you today. Do you understand what I'm giving you? I'm giving you a sword. I'm giving you a dagger. I'm giving you a sledgehammer. I'm giving you the Gatling gun. I'm giving you the atomic bomb. In the spirit to say, as the accuser comes to you and says things like that, that says, you don't deserve it. You, you're suffering because you, you, you did this or didn't do that. And you're, this is just nothing but uh, judgment against you. <laughs> You say right back to all that, nope, that's not the truth of the living God. I am not under condemnation. Amen. Be gone, Satan. Amen. Be gone, Satan. You know, we need to get that more in our vocabulary, all right? There is no condemnation in Christ Jesus our Lord. Be gone, Satan. When guilt starts racing over you like a flood, like the Niagara Falls, and you start roping down into a depression, it's time to say, there is no condemnation in, because I am in Christ Jesus our Lord. Be gone, Satan. Okay. Well, what about the no condemnation in marriage difficulties? Woo. Everybody say it with me. No condemnation, come on, say it. No condemnation in marriage difficulties. What am I saying? Say you feel disappointed or even somehow deeply wronged in your marriage. Perhaps you've even been hurt or banged around some or, or hurt so deeply that, that uh, 
uh, all of a sudden there's, there's a problem and you're having your struggle to have the moral power and to forgive and to keep on loving and to keep on hoping and not resort, resort to returning evil for evil. You're struggling with that. In fact, the truth is you're condemning the other person. What is the answer? The answer is Romans 8, 1. You got to remind yourself again and again and again that Christ Jesus does not condemn you. Your future is free for everlasting joy. Now, there's some consequences, meaning that when things happen in marriages and they split apart, I mean, there are consequences because that, I mean, you got you to jump through hoops to make this happen, that happen, okay? But that should not rob our joy. Because why? There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Do not let that kind of thing destroy your joy in the Lord. The devil wants to destroy, make you weak. How does he do that? He's going to rob you of your joy. Why does that make you weak? Because the joy of the Lord is my strength. Are you with me? Now, I'm not preaching that you ought to, you know, throw things at each other and argue and, <laughs> and split up. I'm not preaching that. I'm just saying specifically about condemnation. There's no condemnation. The devil will come and use anything he can to destroy you, tear you down. See, from the reservoir of mercy and hope, I need you to draw bucket after bucket of mercy for your spouse. Whoever, whatever's happened, whatever's going on, draw buckets of mercy and cast it upon the situation. And God will work wonders of grace in your life and over time in your marriage. And thirdly, all right, say it with me. No condemnation in the failures of parenting. Now, this doesn't apply to me. I was perfect, okay? I'm just saying. <laughs> see, what do you, see, I've gone through it all. I mean, I had them when they were ooey gooey. Oh, yeah, da, 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 da. And they go, oh. right? And then I had them at the, two-year-old stage, if you'd like to take a dadgum something and say, what have I done? Maybe put him up for adoption or something. <laughs> you know, and then I had him in that sweet, amazing five through 12-year-old stage that you just could eat them up. I mean, they're just so amazing. They do what you ask them to. You love being with them. They love being with you. It's mommy. It's daddy. It's give me this. Give me that. Do that. Do this. What can I do to help you? Let's bake cookies together. Let's do this. Let's do that. And they walk with you while you're mowing the yard so they can learn how to mow the yard. I mean, you name it. It is amazing age right then. Can I get an amen? Then something happens. At age 15 or 16, something really takes on. I don't know what it is, but there's some kind of biological clock that snaps. And all of a sudden, it is this person you do not know. And you're going, what in the world? And I've been through five of those, and nothing changes. Okay? But I can tell you one thing. Every one of them are different. <laughs> nothing changes, but every one of them are different. Not one is exactly the same. <laughs> So what does the devil want to do? See, what are you going to do if your children break your heart? See, we're going to find ample reasons for thinking that it was our fault. You know why? The devil will come and start speaking into your ear and say, you know, you didn't do a good enough job raising them. That's why they're doing all this. You didn't pray with them enough. You didn't talk to them enough. You didn't steer them enough. You didn't do whatever, whatever, whatever enough. I've heard those words come right out of my, mouth, my wife's mouth to me. And I, I've even wondered the same kind of things about our sons. And I just have to keep going back saying, the basic truth is steadfast. We believe in God. 
We lived as best we know how in front of them to say God is supreme. We went to church, whether they like it or not, we took them with them. And, you know, they, sometimes they resented it, right? They resented it. But the truth is, God is going to bring them all back to a point that they serve him. Amen. That's what's going to happen. Now, what if they break your heart? The devil knows that. <laughs> Why? Because it's hard on you. You can't help but speak about it some. You talk to your spouse. You, you talk to a real close friend. You say, it just breaks my heart. It's hard to sort it out, isn't it, as a parent? It's really difficult to sort it out. You just can't explain it. You can't grasp it. And my heart just is ripped in so many shreds. As a parent, as a father, who in the world is going to sort all this out? God. God. He's the one that's going to sort it out. So how are you going to keep going since God is going to sort it out in his timing when it's exact, everything's right, and now, <laughs> you know, when it finally comes to place, you know, I just, um, one of my sons have just, he started a Bible study with his uh, girlfriend and they're, they're, they're studying a particular thing and then they have a devotional they do and, um, and they're talking back and forth on the phone and stuff like that. I am blown away. I mean, I'm just like, now, <laughs> now, thank you, Lord, thank you, now. See, how can I keep loving and how can I keep helping? My wife says, you're too soft. You've gotten too soft for my... <laughs> Bless her heart. She wants me to be so... You know, older I get, she thinks I'm getting softer and softer. I can just go back and say to her, Vonette, listen, I love these boys. So you know what? I'm going to keep living Jesus before them. And even if they hurt me, even if they rip me to shreds, I'm going to love them, and I'm going to do what Jesus would do as best I know how. Amen. That's the only way I can go. Because, listen, then I have to let God do his thing, right? I have to trust God to do his thing, right? You know, sometimes we, try, we want to get too involved when they're older. We want to get too involved. And here's what happens. Instead of letting them stumble and skin their knee, they just stumble and we catch them. And as long as you keep catching them, th there's going to be no change. You let them stumble and bust their lip. You let them stumble and skin their knee. You let them stumble and they find themselves in financial trouble and then they're really struggling. Guess what? Those are the things of life that will teach them. You can't be an enabler. There's a time. See, I can remember when my son was three and we'd go walking down the sidewalk together and he would stumble and start to fall and I had a hold of his hand and I'd just go, whoop. That's a time to, to catch them. When they're innocent, when, they're, when they, don't, they, they don't have all their faculties, they're not all together there, hey, that's the time to catch them. My friend, let me tell you something, at 25, there's no time to catch them. Leave it alone. Let God do his work. If we bail them out each and every time, it's going to be a problem down the road. It's going to, the, nothing's going to change. <laughs> so I could go on and on and on, but listen, no condemnation. Even, listen to me, no condemnation on your pastor. No condemnation on elders. No condemnation on People that serve in ministries. No condemnation on people who sit in pews. No condemnation for every single person Amen. that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. So the only question left is where are you? Are you in Christ Jesus our Lord? Or are you separated from Christ? 
See, what, what happens if you don't invite Christ in your life? What happens when you don't believe? Guess what? This gift I'm talking about today, you're not going to receive it. Because the Bible says clearly, whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life. But the what? Wrath of God remains on him. Listen, we've been, those of us that are in Christ Jesus, the wrath of God has been, we've been taken out from it. There's no condemnation, no wrath of God. Those that have not, not believed, you remain right there. So, are you on the inside or the outside? Are you free of condemnation or are you under it? Let me just say real carefully t today, right now, I want to use that word, right now, there's plenty of room in Christ Amen. for everybody. Amen. All you have to do is to receive him. Christ is saying to every sinner, every person, come, trust me, enter, I'll be your life, I'll be your righteousness. I'll be your pardon because I have become your condemnation. So, there's room in Christ. I want us to read this together because there is now no, there's no condemnation for those that are in Christ, right? That is a declaration of an amazing, I'm set free from wrath of God. Let's read it together. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Father, in the name of Christ, we give you praise. We give you glory. We're thankful that there is no condemnation for those of us that are in Christ.